All right, welcome to Digital Literacy Workshop. And I just realized that the title is wrong on here. I wonder if I have the wrong one. I don't think I do. I think I just forgot to turn, change the title. The title today is not Discovering New Things in Discovery Education Streaming, but the title today is um, Coding with Kids and Looking at the Hour of Code. And um, some of you have been here before and you'll know, and I emailed everybody um, our collaborative notes. Not a lot on them today, um, just so you can see. We have collaborative notes here. If there's anything that you want to add to the note or questions that you have or ideas that you have, you can add them here. Or you can just use this as a reference um, when you go to take a look. So, And you'll notice on the notes, sorry, you'll notice on the notes that there's a link to the archives. And um, so after this is recorded today, I will um, post that on the archives along with the notes so that you can go back and take a look at it if you need to or share it with somebody else. Um, another piece of this is there's a, a Google form for a reflection and that's how um, we're, we're assigning clock hours. So make sure that um, after you attend the webinar that you click on the reflection form and fill, fill that out so that you can um, qualify for clock hours. Okay, get back over here. And uh, we have some new people here today, so just to tell everybody when we do go to meetings, I mute everyone because um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, I don't know what that's called. There's a lot of people there, there's a lot of noise, so I, um, I mute everybody and looking to see I lost my thing. Making sure we're still on, still on here. So I mute everyone and then, um, and sorry, I'm a little distracted because I can't see my meeting. <laughs> I mute everyone. There we go. Okay. I mute everyone and um, if you have something that you need to say or a question that you need to ask, if you type it in the chat window, I'll check in there every once in a while and I will um, try to answer those questions for you. Okay, our learning target for today, see I was right, I just changed, didn't change the title page, but um, we're going to look at the resources available for participating in the Hour of Code and teaching kids to code. And again, like I said at the end, make sure that you reflect on your learning. Um, this is this link was sent to you in the email, and it's also um, in the notes, so you should be able to grab a hold of that. All right, and then next week, just while we're here on this slideshow, um, next week will be our last um, digital literacy workshop of the year, and we're going to talk about creating a t teacher blog. Again, it'll just be a short. Um, quick get you started because um, it's only 20 minutes, but hopefully it'll get you some ideas to help you get started. All right, so I'm going to jump over to um, to this. Um, <laughs> I'm getting notes everywhere. Okay, sorry. I'm going to jump over here to um, this site, which is called. Um, code.org, and it has been set up with the idea that uh, we need our students to be learning how to code, just like we need them to be learning how to decode and read and, um, and uh, do math and all of that, that all of these are important skills for them to have as they uh, move into this 21st century and the jobs that they're going to have. And um, even if they're not going to um, have a job in computer science, uh, coding teaches a lot of great skills for kids. Problem solving, logic, um, um, sequencing, there's just a lot that can happen. There's a lot of creativity in coding. So it's a great thing to do with your kids. And this um, organization has done an excellent job of setting up resources for us to use to um, introduce kids and adults to coding so we kind of get what it is and um, and then resources for extending beyond that. So the idea is this 
this um, week is computer education, computer, computer science education week. And this week, um, the, the plan is to get as many people as possible to take one hour to learn how to code. So one hour of coding, so you get an idea of what it is. And they have done an, a beautiful job of setting up different um, tutorials at different levels. And they've got some big name people who have joined in, including the President of the United States and, um, and others. So it, it's, it's a pretty cool thing. So if you go to this code.org, you'll see that there is a way to sign in. And if you sign in, you can actually um, be registered to win some prizes and things like that. And they're just kind of, as you see, there's a, there's a thing here. So um, they're, keeping up, they're keeping track with how many people have gone through the program to see how many people have been, code, have, have been coding. And you see up here how many people, um, how many lines of code have been written by students. So if you take a look here, you'll see, um, I'm just going to click on Start. There are tons of really nice videos um, that can help kids get started and to help people understand why they need to code. And I'm in the wrong place here. I lost my I lost my notes here. Just a second. Notes. There we go. Okay. Just want to make sure I don't forget something I was going to say. So you'll see um, in the notes, I put down, um, there was a link this morning, and it's actually a message from the president. Um, and, and he's just encouraging kids to code not only for fun and not only because it's going to help them with their work, but it's also great information. So I thought that was kind of cool that that was there. Um, so you can click to that link there, but I'll, I'll also show you several links along the way. So you'll see here there's three tabs. And this Learn an Hour Code is the place to jump in. And you'll take a look here. This first thing, the tutorials for beginners. Most of us are beginners. And so I'll just show you a little bit of that. So they have um, created these very simple and fun tutorials. And like they say here, ages 6 through 106. And um, there's um, ways to do this on smartphones, tablets, and they say modern browsers. So basically that means if you have Flash on your computer, you can do this. So if I click here on these tutorials for beginners, it actually starts, and I'm, I'm going to stop it here in a minute, but it starts with a video in a minute. It will start with a video, and it will actually explain uh, what's going on. And I'm going to click off of here if it will let me. It's not going to let me. So I'll just keep talking for right now. My computer's being a little funky. But anyway, it has... That's not good. <laughs> I have a, a pesky Skype connection here. Okay. I don't really need Skype at all for this. Anyway, it starts with a video that explains how to do this first thing. And it starts very simply with these little blocks of code. So here I've got my angry bird, and I'm trying to get to the pig. So for this very simple, very first thing I would do, I would move the bird two places. One, two. And then I'm going to run the program. <laughs> And then it continues on, and it just gets, actually for this one, there's 20. And once you get through with those 20, and it takes you through all kinds of different pieces of coding and videos from different people, including Bill Gates, um, that are telling you how to do the different steps. And at the end, at 20, you will have spent about an hour learning to code. So that's one simple one. And this one has angry birds and zombies. I'm going to go back here. Um, and hit start. You can take a look through here. This is a really fun one, especially this time of year. This is using a program. Um, it, this is Scratch. And Scratch, they say 8 plus. And with Scratch, you can create um, animated um, 
videos and you can make the characters move around and say things and go in different directions and turn different colors. And again, it's using this really, this blockly is what this is called, this coding where you're just taking different blocks and, and kind of putting them together to make the, the things do something. So this is a great activity for kids to, in this case, it takes them step by step through creating a holiday card. And um, it's really fun and it's, it's easy to do. I encourage all of you, even if you don't get to do this with students this week, pick one of these tutorials and play, play through it yourself so you can learn a little bit about it. And then they'll be here for later. Okay, and just I'm um, going to continue on. Then they've got build your own games. And so this is for kids 5 to 13. And there's lots of different games that they can play. Um, they can create and do different things. So if I click on here, I was doing this earlier. And I started with this very simple one for grades 1 through 3. You'll see that there's ones for um, intermediate and different ones. And this particular one's an elementary level thing. But um, it, like on this very beginning one, it teaches you how to make the puppy do different things, bark and jump and different things like that. And it just continues on. And this light box, another really easy one. Um, and you'll notice that some of these, like this one, can be used on iPods and iPads. And then they have an app, Inventor. And this is more for middle school plus. And they can actually create apps that they can play on their smartphones or, or um, iPod touches. And so those, those are some of the just the very simple. And this is where I would say to start with these tutorials for beginners, because most of us are beginners. I will say that um, Greg Dowd has been working with, um, he has a coding club at the middle school. And his kids are working and they're learning JavaScript. And they're actually creating, um, he actually put something on here. They're using something called Edity to create HTML. And, um, and they're using that on their website. So there's this. You'll notice, I'm going to go back up to the top. So, so this is that learn one hour of code. So this is really where you're probably going to spend your time this week learning an hour of code. And once you're hooked, because it's really fun, you might want to do beyond one hour. And so um, there's, some, there's some stuff here um, for doing beyond one hour or maybe for older kids right here. But then this is really cool, too. They actually are, they have lessons where you can teach um, kids coding without a computer. So here, and I, and I have not gone through this, but here you can kind of see they've had to They've had to write their code here about what these cups are going to do, and then the, and then they have to act out, follow the follow the information that the other person wrote. So I think that's kind of cool that they can even do it with um, without um, any devices. And Blockly is part of Google Education, and that's that's that kind of it's that block stuff here. So there's some stuff on that. And then there's oh, these traveling um, circuits. So they've got these, these um, bobbles, and they're these things that you connect together in different ways, and it, and, it, and it makes it different things happen. And again, here's, um, this is from Codable, which is a, um, it's programming logic that starts with, this says 8 through 13, but you can actually do it for um, um, kids as young as five. So you hear, you've been chosen to help the Buzz family explore of Earth. Program your robot to complete the obstacle course using the code below. So another fun one here. Lots of cool things here. You'll see also that it shows different devices that you can use. Um, so again, like I said before, it's not all just on your PC computer. It can be an iOS device or Android. Kids can learn different programming languages. So um, Python and some different drawing programs with code. So there's just a ton of stuff. Moving a robot around. Lots to explore here. So speaking of lots to explore, you'll notice that um, the week 
I mean, after this week, this hour of code, where we're just trying to get everybody, you know, to have that toe dip into coding, there's this beyond one hour. And they've got this whole K through 8 intro to computer science class. And I've already signed up, so I'm going to sign in so you can see what it looks like. See if I can do this this way. Oops. Oh, yeah, I did it this way. Forgot. Okay, so you'll notice here what they do is they're taking you through. This would be great in a computer lab with kids, very self directed. That's what I like about all of this stuff is it's very self-directed. So that the kids could actually walk through all of these steps with a tutorial at each step showing them what to do. And once they do that, they win these little trophies. And they can actually, if, they can actually win prizes if they collect all 27 of these trophies. So this is a fun activity for kids after they've done the hour of code and they're still interested. Um, this would be a fun thing for them to work through. Again, they could do this in a lab, they could do this at home, they could do it anywhere. So does anybody have any questions about the hour of code? I wanted to show one, a couple more things here. And then I know why everybody's really here today. So we'll look at that in just a minute too. <laughs> I wanted to show you that there's several videos, very inspiring videos, different links where you can kind of explain and you'll see some um, kind of famous faces there. And then there's some posters that can be printed out. There's Mark Zuckerberg. And I don't know this guy, but I guess he's a football, I mean a basketball player, Chris Bosch. So, and Susan Wojcicki. So some neat things you'll notice down here, they have some specific things, um, outreach guide for Latinas and some stuff for women. So trying to get other people, I mean, our, um, our Latinas interested and women interested in computer science. So they've got some really great resources here. Okay, any questions or ideas or things you would like to share about coding with kids? All right, I'm really, I really encourage you guys to do this. It's really um, fun. Even, like I said, even if you can't do it with your students this week, I encourage you to do it for yourself and then, um, and then try to work that in for your students later on. Okay, so I know that everybody is anxious to, let's see if I can find what I'm looking for here. Um, we're all very anxious to find out about our celebration of learning. Isn't that all why you're really here? Okay. So we're going to have our drawing for our celebration of learning here. I'm going to get rid of that so you can see that. Um, and some of you on here have uh, participated in the celebration of learning um, um, collaborative collaborative, um, sorry, my brain, collaborative presentation, and uh, it looks great. I'm really excited. Um, I'm going to get out of here real quick and see if I can find I'll Give you a quick peek of what's been done. I want to make sure that um, I have everybody on here who's added something. I'm going to hit present, and we'll go through it real quick. Whoops, I didn't start at the beginning. Let's start at the beginning. Okay, so we had this um, Celebrate Learning, and I can't wait to put this up and share with people. Of course, we are trying to win this. Okay, this was my example. And then we've got uh, Leah Ligari's um, use of Edmodo in her classroom. And then we've got Barb Tannis, Modeling for Sense. And then we've got Tracy Hancock and Jean Farber using, uh, I mean, having lunch with the mayor with some um, students. And Regan Kent with her edible earth materials. And Juan Galana working with Spanish reading intervention. 
and uh, Kelly McAllister with multiplication and division, and Diane LaVoy, second graders using iPads, and Jody McDaniel with her, and I just realized I don't have Jody McDaniels on this. That's the reason I'm doing this. <laughs> Jody McDaniel talking about the Bulldog store and, and how the students are learning um, some really good skills with that. And uh, Stacy Kelsey's kindergarten snail races. And this um, Unity ASB leadership class under Unity project. Future Business Leaders of America, some more snails with Sarah Dahl, and um, this is some more stuff that Sarah did. They're using their math manip manipulatives, and here they are conferencing about their writing. And Jody and Lori Cur Cur Jody Burkholder and Lori Curley making bread with their students. Emily Checkets, who's here with us today, yay. Uh, working with this one student, learning about his different feelings, and she took pictures with the other so that. Fourth graders at Washington, learning about Washington State with Sarah Forslund, Jeff Ballou, working on SMART goals, Robert Hand and his artistic um, creative foods class, and Jessica Guzik and the drama at LaVenture, and Rebecca Schumann working with DNA, Shelly Flagg working with vocabulary, and Nancy Colson working uh, in science with transverse waves, Nikki Klinger with PE showing how to, how to put your arm to do a, bas a basketball shot, Tim Hornbacher talking about TED Talks and a Life Hacker series, and uh, Rachel Grisham talking about world history and primary source analysis. The tech department doing a job share here. And Tracy um, Hall working with the winter program with the kindergarten class. And I think that's it. I'm very excited. This is really great work and, I, and I'm going to post this for all of you to get to share, to take a look at closer. Okay, so what I'm going to do over here, and I'm going to move this over here, I don't want anybody to think I'm cheating at all. I am going to copy these people's names down. Okay. Copy. And then I'm going to go to this random name selector. So I've got everybody's name in there. Um, Christine, good question. Uh, Christine wants to know, this: do the students need to log in or can they just go to code.org and get started? They don't need to log in, they can just go to code.org and get started. If they want to be eligible for those prizes and things like that, um, they can log in and they can use their Google accounts to log in. So, um, but they don't have to. You can just jump on, nobody has to log in. You don't have to log in as a teacher either. So um, that's just so they can kind of keep, they're wanting people to log in because they're trying to keep track of how many people are coding and all of that, but, but you don't have to do that. Okay, so here we go. Drum roll, please. Let's see. I'm trying to find all my stuff and I'm not doing a very good job of it. Got my, okay, that's going to be. All right, so. First thing we're going to draw for is the Keurig brewing system. Some people like to, I've got, I've got some other prizes too, but I always hate it when you're at a conference or something like that and they draw out all these little piddly things and you're thinking, oh man, I got that instead of the thing. So we're just going to find out right away who wins the Keurig system. So drum roll please, let's see if this works. Select name. Okay, I did this before. Oh, that's not what I need to do. I've got to do one more thing. It didn't take me where I wanted to go. Okay, select name. Did it work? Oh, there we go. One more time. Wasn't in the right spot. Okay, 
Sarah Dahl is the winner of the Keurig Brewing System. Yay, Sarah Dahl. Okay, but don't get your hopes. I've got a beautiful Android cup. So I need to write Sarah Dahl's email, so I'm not going to forget that. But Okay, here we go again. If your name gets called again, I will um, ignore it and go to the next one. So I'm going to hit Tracy Hall. Tracy Hall is the winner of a Starbucks gift card. $10 gift card. <laughs> okay. And oh, oh, another thing I wanted to mention is we had representation from all of our schools in this contest, which was pretty cool. Okay. Here we go again. Rachel Grisham. She is the winner of an Android cup from Google. Like a coffee cup. Okay. And now I don't know how this is going to work. Well, this will work. Tracy Hancock and Jean Faber are Barber, I think it is. I think I left out a letter. It, they won a Starbucks gift card, so we'll have to share that with each other because they put in one slide together. All right, here we go. And Leah won a very cool Starbucks cup with coffee in it. Not not hot coffee. Coffee um, to brew. <laughs> All right, and another group project. We've got Lori Curley and Jody Burkholder want a Starbucks gift card. And got two more to go. Nancy Colson won a Starbucks gift card. And last one. Oh, Tracy can't win two. <laughs> Sarah can't win two. Oh no, it's doing all the same ones. Ready, go for. It. Okay, so this one is Sarah Duncan and Sarah Dahl, but I'll give this to Sarah Duncan. All right, all right. So we have our winners, and I will let everybody know. Does anybody else have anything that they would like to, um, okay, so Eva asked about where the notes were again. I emailed the notes to you. They're also available on the archive, and I can actually put them in the notes right here. So let's see if I can find my notes. Got too many things going on here. Don't want that anymore. Okay, so I'm going to put the link to the notes in here. There you go. And looking to make sure that I have all the questions answered. All right. Thank you very much for attending. And um, we will put this, I will put this slideshow together so everybody can see. And let me know if you do do something with the Hour of Code, please let me know. Um, we'd love to get something in the newspaper or up on the website to share what we're doing with that. So thank you all for attending, and I hope you all have a wonderful and safe evening tonight. Okay. <laughs>